I can Hi, normally good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with Smart Business Moves. Got Liz Trotter with me. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. And we've got some awesome guests today. You guys are going to be blown away. I hope you brought your good questions with you. I got Yusuf and Zainab Mahmet. Ah, Mahmet. Mahmet Ola. Mahmet Thank you. Um, we're gonna. They've got a really rocking business up in uh, Northern Virginia, Washington D.C. area. I've known Yusuf for 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 a number of years. Been very active in RCC See him at convention every year, and uh, his business keeps growing year after year. So you know, another five years. Who knows where they'll be? Um, before we get too deep into it, uh, there is a little bit of news that, that, that came out over the last 24 hours that we'll just share with you about the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. It looks like our Senate has uh, put forth some legislation and I guess it passed the Senate unanimously um, where they're extending the application date for PPP into, I think it's August, August 8th. Um, I know most people on these discussions have already applied for their funds, but if for some reason you haven't, you've got another month to do it. And there's discussions about maybe doing another round of PPP or coming up with some other things to kind of keep the program going after that. Nothing solid yet. So don't, don't start spending those monies yet. It hasn't happened, but uh, um, looks like uh, that the fun is going to keep going for a while. Liz, have you heard anything more about that? You know, I did get some stuff today um, from our, our good HR friend that we have, uh, but I haven't had a chance to actually look it over. It looked pretty in interesting. Uh, I'm going to forward it over to you in just a minute, too, Tom. Okay, awesome. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit tomorrow once we yeah. have the opportunity to read a little more into it. So Yusuf, Zana, you guys are in Northern Virginia, correct? Yes, Northern Virginia. And um, how are things in Northern Virginia? How's, how's business? <laughs> I think like anywhere else in the country, right? It's a little bit slower than normal uh, for especially this time of year, you know, spring and summer months. Um, Usually we are, you know, normally busy, fully staffed, but I think due to the pandemic, um, it's, it's slower than usual. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, that way in a lot of places. Um, you know, I don't know, there's probably some, some people with us that, that uh, might not be familiar with your business. Could you guys just give us a little bit of background, you know, uh, name of your company and how long you've been in business and how you guys are doing? Sure. Tom, thank you. Thank you, Liz, for having us this afternoon. And hello to everybody. So my name is Yusuf and Zeynep Mehmetoğlu. Uh, our company, we are, we, we are located in Northern Virginia, and we service DC metro area since 2004. And uh, our company, we specialize in home cleaning services, just the residential cleaning home services. And uh, before the pandemic, uh, we were, uh, until actually March 13, we were uh, fully staffed with the 50 teams in an average given day. We were cleaning around 190 to 200 homes a day. And uh, after, obviously, March 16th, pandemic hit. And then the, the first Monday, our numbers uh, significantly declined and we we went down to 140 cleanings a day, and then the next couple of months we have seen um, 65, 70% dropped in our business. And I remember some days we were around 57, 58, 60 homes a day. So uh, some of our employees, they voluntarily decided not to come to work, uh, which we respect them, of course. Uh, because they were taking care of their family members, the schools, they were closed, and uh, some of them, they were probably having some uh, other issues, so they decided to protect themselves and their loved ones, and then, so, uh, kind of like it, it went smooth, that period, uh, decline of the customers, 
they decided to put a halt to their services, especially considering 90, 95% of our customers, they are recurring customers. And most of them, they, after the announcements, we, uh, we were hearing from the news and everything, people, they decided to put a halt to their services. Uh, they supported us a lot, our customers, they were great, they were awesome. They, they didn't cancel the services or they, they, they just said, we don't know what's going on. We prefer, uh, you know, they, 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 they just canceled the service for a while. And then as a company, we, we, we decided to just spend most of our times to go over our own procedure uh, about our, uh, you know, the way that our operation, day-to-day -day operation, we went over those and we decided, we, we talked about what are we doing. We were having more more meetings than usual, more visual meetings than usual uh, with our teams at the office, at the management. And then, uh, you know, um, the first couple of months, it was a little because nobody really experienced anything like that come in the past, you know. Um, it's uh, it's an unprecedented event. That's the word, yes. Uh, I agree on that big time. And then, so we were just, you know, talking about what should be the best thing for us. And then we, we were also trying to catch up with our supplies and demands, our kind of like some of the uh, protected uh, uh, that we weren't uh, stop those and then we were trying to get those supplies immediately and then um, you know that was a challenge for us but we were able to uh, you know also that gives us an opportunity to find out who are the good provider suppliers who were not good or honest suppliers some of them they were trying to you know they were, they were doing some practices that were in good business practices and then we realized that they are not a good fit for us we decided not to work with those suppliers anymore and then we, we realized that some of the suppliers that we were purchasing uh, little by little they were better to us so that gives us an opportunity to uh, were, were these new relationships that you had to form just because your normal supply chain was disrupted your your your, your normal sources weren't able to give you what you needed? You, you know, Tom, with all respect, especially uh, many suppliers, they were giving the priorities to hospitals or more urgent centers. So we were having that difficulty. And after that, you know, we were able to, from our connections, we were able to find masks, shoe covers, uh, uh, gloves. You know, we weren't using uh, masks before, and then we, we had to purchase stop some uh, uh, masks and shoe, extra shoe covers because like, you know, uh, in the normal given day, we were just using a shoe cover for a day, but now we, we, just, we, we, we start using shoe covers in every house, new pair of shoe cover, new, new pair of gloves, new pair of uh, masks. So they were very hard to find, you know, that was one challenge. And then we were having our weekly meetings on Fridays time with our all the office and the uh, team members, you know, uh, in our office. And we, we post that for the past three months and we are communicating via texting and emails. And we try to, not we try to, we are, uh, we are texting all of our team members weekly basis to make sure we are still telling them the importance of wearing shoe covers, masks, and then you know it's not a job you know it's still uh, not completely gone so there are some states there the numbers are still increasing uh, you know the cases are still increasing luckily where we are in dc maryland area i think people they are more careful they are taking more caution and, than some other part of the country so uh, people they are still very hesitant we uh, we are now at phase two i guess we are going to go to Phase three, if I'm not mistaken, starting from this afternoon. But still, like people, they are very, they're not like cautious. They are they're still cautious and cleaning, uh, getting their homes cleaning. It's not their priority, considering many people they work from home, men and women they work from home, and they are getting their house clean by themselves. So well, I, I have a bunch of questions already. <laughs> Already, I have questions, I have comments. 
So I, I'm just going to keep raising my hand because I always have a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want to interrupt too much because <laughs> I'm like, oh, everything's gold. So one thing I just wanted to point out to everybody really quickly is that this is a really big company. And you guys had a lot of the same problems that we had. We had a problem with, uh, you know, shoe covers and masks and and all, all of that stuff, trying to source it, et cetera. So I'm, I'm pointing that out to everybody. Even big companies have problems. You know, they were in on this too. Then another thing is I really love that whenever we talk to really successful companies, they always say this one word. And you guys have said it a couple times. Actually, Yusuf, you've said it multiple times now. And the word is opportunity. So whenever bad stuff happens, one of the things that I notice is that really successful companies always find the opportunity. And you guys mentioned a few different times and ways that you found opportunity. Find who are we going to work with, different suppliers. So I just wanted to point that out to everybody also. And then one more thing that I really got to point out to everybody is really successful company. It's the first time I've heard anybody talk about the exact date. From March, you know, on March, what date was it? You said 14? March 13, uh, Friday, March 13. We March were 13. Staff, and then March 16, it was a new uh, start for us, you know. New start. I don't know anybody else that has those dates like that. What that means to me is he watches those numbers with an eagle eye. And mm-hmm. a lot of times we see you know, um, smaller businesses that, that we don't do that as well as we should. So if you're looking for what are some of the things you can do to be a bigger, successful company like Maybright, I mean, look for clues. You know, that's something that people always say. Success leaves clues. And you guys are just like dropping clues all over the place for us. All right. So that's just stuff I had to point out for everybody. Um, and then I have a question. Um, so you said that you had had a 65 to 70 percent drop overall. Um, did you guys ever close? Yes, we haven't because luckily, you know, uh, we are, we are, you guys know me, but I have two other brothers. They are my business partners. We have a couple other businesses that we are, uh, we are partnering, we work together and we have Tough times we were having, we were meeting every uh, couple of times a week, uh, thinking about the, the best route for our companies, for our employees to make sure. Uh, I can say proudly we didn't lay off or furlough any single employee during the five times. Even before the PPP start, we didn't, we, we, we didn't, we just, we didn't lay off any of our employees because they, they were always with us for over 15, 16 years. So we were, we, we, we couldn't do that. So uh, they, you know, uh, we didn't close, but we, we, we took all the necessary uh, routes, like the office stuff, for instance, Liz, uh, they, we, we just, we just had them to work. Like what we did was we gave a pink color to the half of the teams and yellow color to uh, the rest of the 25 teams. And we rotate them, uh, pink teams, they work three, th- three days a week. And then yellow teams, they work two days a week. And if you work three days a week this week, you work two days a week the following week. And the office staff, some of our office members, we decided uh, because they were having some other, uh, you know, uh, personal issues, we told them to stay home, work from home, and some of them they work their vacation times. Uh, some of them again they work, they 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 work the whole week. But they they came early, they left early, half day. And then some of our employees at the office, team members, again they they just work from home. But you know we didn't close. But what we did was you know of course I respect everybody. Everybody they they are trying their best. Um, uh, but you know uh, what we did the the most. If you ask me, what was the best thing that we did to ourselves? We really put on our operation. We have gone over all the customer database, and then we created a fund to our employees, uh, employee relief fund. Uh, Zainab uh, was leading that one. We have a great um, great response from our customers. I would like to thank them as well. If any one of them are watching, 
and then you know we we check all the the way that we respond to emails, the way that we uh, follow up with our customers after the initial service, recurring customers. So we went everything. The, the last week, for instance, I, I had a meeting with our HR person, and then we just, they updated us with the current changes with the COVID related. So there are certain things that I guess everybody needs to know. I guess maybe it's too much in detail, but you know, we try to focus on our job. We didn't like any other uh, companies or businesses, we didn't get into uh, commercial cleaning or we didn't go into parking or this and that. I am opposed to that kind of stuff because I just don't think that this, this was the right time. We talked to many of our customers. There were so many people that were, uh, the, the term pivot was what everybody was using. We're gonna do food delivery. We're gonna walk dogs. We're gonna fill in the blank. and. That's not scalable and that's not sustainable for a lot of people. So I, I respect that decision. You mentioned that you used to have team meetings every Friday and you replaced that with a text. So you have company cars, you have like the cap capacity for like 50 teams. You've got 50 automobiles, don't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. So do your team still meet at your office every day to, to pick up cars? Um, not currently. So we paused. Uh, uh, all the um, in-house office meetings uh, indefinite so because we prefer everybody comes in the morning they grab their tablets and they hit, hit the road we try not to have more than 10 people still at the office I'm a little worried about them about customers so their safety is our number one priority uh, you know so we try to be still careful and then you know we, we are communicating more than we were before. Like if we have new hirees, we just want to make sure they're comfortable. They're learning everything. The, the, the biggest challenge that we were having, Tom, you know, we are working teams of two people and whenever we have a new hirees, they go as a third person. So that was a big challenge. So we didn't want to have three people driving together. That was just my personal thing that I thought maybe three people too close to each other might not be very safe to them. So we kind of hold off that training period quite some time and we were training them one and one. So we, we were assigning, we have some trainers from supervisors taking them one and one and sending those teams to our family members' homes to make sure they're comfortable. They can take their sweet time to learn. So that was a lot of learning for us to, you know, that was new. I, we didn't know every day we were thinking about something else, but we were able to text them. We are using text messaging. Every Friday, we write a paragraph. What is the most yeah. important this week for you? Sorry, go ahead. Do you mind sharing, like, what, what did one of your texts sound like? You know, uh, we were just updating uh, our team members. We, I'm, I'm always very positive personally. I don't like to say half of the glass is empty. I, I, I'm always positive. I'm always motivated. I, I never thought that this is gonna last forever, but I know it was tough time. So very encouraging. We are supporting them. We are supporting you guys. You're not, you're not losing your job. So it started out like that. And we, we, to, we told them that, you know, they are not going to clean three houses, but even if they are cleaning one houses, we will still they will still get paid uh, whatever they were. So what we did as a company, I'm sorry that I'm jumping multiple topics. So oh, this is great. The office, what we, we did, awesome. Liz, I I told that I told the our office manager. I said, can you please bring me three months of average of each employee, how much they are making. And then we decided, even before the PPP started, we decided to pay our employees whatever they were making before the pandemic. So you want to take that call? Or? No, it's, I'm just yeah. silencing it. Are you kidding? No. <laughs> um, you've, um, are, did, you, you mentioned PPP. So you guys got PPP funding? That's correct, yes. Okay. Are you still in your period where you're using your PPP funds? So not really, Tom. That's what I was going to say. Uh, if you don't mind me, let me finish what I was saying before. So uh, all of our team members, they were still making like towards the end of March until the end of April. Uh, they were still making what they were uh, making before, but our numbers weren't there to give them a full schedule. 
they told them, please, we want you guys, we don't want our teams to go clean three houses. That's not safe for them or four houses. We're going to give you one or two houses. You're still going to work as long as you feel comfortable, but you'll still get paid. So clarifying that time of the period was a little difficult for us. For me, especially because I had like a, a, a more stress than because I have a lot of uh, responsibilities to them and to their families. And then, so for, uh, for right now, we, our numbers are back. So yesterday we did 130. Our numbers are still improving. Any given day, we have two sales managers still doing in-home estimates. Each one of them, they have like five, six estimates. So we are averaging like 10, 11, 12 estimates, 14 estimates a day. The sign-up rates are overwhelming. People and did. you're doing home estimates, right? Yes, that's what we have been doing it, and that's what we will be doing it. But we are planning to do. Uh, we are also we discussed that with with my with my uh, co-workers, with with everybody at the operation. So we are working on a new feature. So we we will be able to provide like next day services. Um, we are setting that up, so we are almost done. In the next month, we are hopefully, by the end of July, we will be launching that. If you need a one-time service, we will start very little. It's going to be very small steps. Let's, let's say if you need a move out cleaning tomorrow, excuse me, and you're busy, you don't have time, so you should be able to go, not cookie cutter like some other people they do. I have seen their platforms, they're not really, uh, they're not really to the point that what your your pricing should be. So we want to be clear, very close to whatever our in-home estimate would be. So we are working on that. That's going to be, we will be offering that for one time, or I don't want to call one time, but I want to call more like, you know, maybe move and move out kind of services. We will have an instant estimates available in the near future. We are not rushing so much. All right. well, I just have to drop another little truth bomb on y'all here about success leaves clues. So a lot of times we'll hear these, these things that, oh no, you can't do home estimates. Nobody does home estimates anymore. Want to bet? Only the largest company does. Do you have to do home estimates? No, well, you would agree, right, Yusuf? You don't have to do home estimates. But that's what's been working for you. And it can still work. It does. You have to just design all of your systems around what you're doing so that everything supports everything else. Would you agree? You know, Liz, I agree. But I respect everybody runs their business the way uh, they want to run their businesses. But one thing yeah. I'd like to tell you, know, the good thing about it, if they are considering the good thing about in-home estimates, there's a higher retention rate. So we are not thinking about just Tom's one-time cleaning. Of course, we value that, but what is our, our goal is as a company uh, to have Tom become a main drive customer for for good. So she, he yeah. gives us a credit because our managers, they come to his house. It is completely free, no obligation estimate. And then we explain our services. Sometimes people, they're asking certain stuff that we don't provide. So we can clarify the expectations. At least we are not over prom promising and under delivering. So we tell Tom, Tom, you know what? We appreciate your time, sir. But due to the, this reason, maybe it's better that you may go with another provider or you may need these services that we don't provide. So what I would say, like if we clean 10 house, 10 initial houses, I would say 70, 80% of our initial clients, they turn into a recurring customers. So this is my... I am a good number guy, so I think this is important. So I don't know what they yeah. do, but you know, that's. Do you, do you find your close rate on in-home estimates is typically higher than the numbers you hear with people who like quote over the phone or do online booking? You know, Tom, uh, I can tell you, like, let's say if you got 10 estimate requests on, uh, on uh, several multiple platforms, such as like Google, PPC, SEO, Yelp, Angie's List, Consumer Checkbook, Nextdoor, House. So there are a bunch of platforms, right? So I would say ten, uh, se seven out of 10 estimates, uh, estimate requests, they turn into an estimate. So three of them, 
they, they don't like us, the idea of in-home estimate, which we respect that. Okay. But 90% of that seven estimates turn into a recurring uh, customer. So I personally care about the retaining part of it. Sign up rate the ratio is important, but retaining retention part is more important. So out of that seven customers, I would say again, 80, 85% they become our regular customers. If not, they are, we, we make sure we make it right immediately. Next day, you will get an email, call and text, make sure you were happy with the service. If not, we will make it right, we will send it in, whatever it takes come to, to be happy. So we don't take it personal. We never taken anything personal. If you are not happy, you are not happy, period. So we, we just want to make sure, even if I will refund you your cleaning fee, but I will still clean your house for free to make sure nothing goes bad about us. So that's how much serious we take our job. So people, they appreciate that. I think I, I, I want to add to that. I think that that's been a huge factor in um, our customers helping to contribute to the fund that we created. So at the beginning yeah. of the pandemic, um, before the, the PPP, we had set up a fund so that we could um, pay our our teams even though they weren't working on site. And to do this, we helped, we asked our customers if they'd like to contribute. And um, on top of their contribution, we told them that our family, the Mehmetoli family, would, would match their contribution. And you know, the support was extraordinary. I mean, it was it was mind blowing that everybody wanted to do something to support support our team, support our company. And I think one of the reasons for that was that they got to know us on a personal level. Because when you yeah. go to their homes, you do spend at least a half an hour, maybe longer sometimes because you chit chat about the company, about you know how long we've been in business, what we do, how we do it, and, and sort of customize the cleaning to, to their likes too. And I think that was a huge factor in us getting that much support from our customers, doing those in-home estimates. Oh, yeah. People, people are looking for an in-home estimate are looking for a relationship. Exactly. I agree. You know, there you've got a lot of, I mean, you're in a very large market, a lot of different options. I know there's a lot of companies out there that you go to their website, you plug in number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, they'll give you a number, and you plug in a credit card, and you're not talking to anybody. And there's a market for that. There's people who want that, and they don't want to talk to anybody, but... There's another market that they want to see somebody face to face. They're giving you a key to their home, you know? I mean, that's a relationship that has a high level of trust. And this is this is really good because we haven't, uh, we don't hear a lot from companies that are doing in-home estimates. And I know that a lot of companies have gotten away from that. I know that we used to do a lot of in-home estimates, not so much anymore, but, uh, you're inspiring me. Maybe we need to take a harder look at doing a little more of that. And things do go in cycles too about, you know, how, where, what people want, where their uh, sensitivities are, et cetera. But you guys have been very, very consistent over the years of, of building this business. You, I think you said, Yusuf, that you guys have 99% recurring. No, 90%. Uh, 90%. 90, 92 95% uh, daily schedule is recurring customers. At least. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's a big number nowadays. And, and then also, I also was curious what your number is around you. One of the things you talked about was doing in-home estimates uh, increases the longevity that uh, a client will stay with you. Do you have that number? Like what? how long does an average client stay with your company? So usually I would say this, the area, like uh, we are in the DC metro area, I'm sure you're familiar, we have a lot of um, uh, government uh, employees, defense industry is in our area, a lot of technology company. They call our area like second Silicon Valley. So there are a lot of high tech companies are in our area. So uh, uh, most of our customers, uh, they, they come here for, three, four years, five years, and they go overseas or they go different states. But I would say average um, around three years, we have a retention for, for a customer. Of course, we have customers, I can tell over easily 
Uh, we have about 3,000 recurring customers. I would say over 100 customers, they have been using our services made right over 10 years. So probably that number, I'm not quite sure about that number, but yeah. I would say 100 to 200 customers that we have, they have been using our services over 10 years. So that tells us a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Uh, that, that's funny because uh, I think that a lot of times we, we talk, we see big companies where think, oh, they must be doing things so different. But I'm not hearing that you guys are doing anything that different as far as operations. The thing that I'm hearing that is different is a lot of care, a lot of care, a lot of respect, a lot of flexibility around caring and respect. That that has always been the thing that stood out for me that you guys did that was really different. You didn't have some kind of new flashy thing that you were doing, this brand new sprayer, this brand new mop thing that's going to revolutionize your business. You've just been really steady with caring and showing that, that care. Yeah, everything we've talked about today is around that, right? How are we going to make sure that people get paid? And, and, and this is also one other thing that just came in, uh, to my mind, you know, when you take good care of your employees, they will take good care of your customers. And then when, when you have a quality, when people, they value your service that, you know, I really need made right to clean my house or I really need uh, their services and then you you will realize that you know you don't have to compete with other it's not a niche business we are not say, selling like expensive purse or watches or jewelries we are a service company we know who we are we are realistic but when you have a quality service people they value the service they know that you know if something goes wrong or if something happens and then they don't nickel and dime with you i mean i'm not saying that we are we are very competitively priced in the industry, but I'm seeing some of my friends, others, because I'm coming to the conventions every year. Some people, they are just like, you know, just because something is not there, they have to go compromise on certain stuff. So it is also difficult for them, for their cash flows, for their running a healthy business. So the quality brings, uh, you know, puts you uh, aside from the other businesses as well. So it's all kind of like a bunch of stubble together. It's a lot of, I think, detail and consistency. Um, and consistency too, in this sense, you know, I, I had a chat with Angela Brown um, a couple a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, um, about, you know, what we were doing during the pandemic. And my mm -hmm. answer to that was, you know, not much different because we're already supposed to be doing these things as cleaning companies. You know, not much has changed besides, yeah, we have to put on a mask, we have to social distance a little bit more. But, you know, in essence, we were already supposed to be, you know, wearing gloves during cleaning, letting the disinfectant sit, knowing which disinfectant we're using, how to, you know, properly clean and disinfect the space. So. You know that consistency and those details really matter and to keep up with them you know not just do it in one house not do it in the other house so i i think they're all you know it's just a big big cycle you know and if yeah, I agree. you break one piece of that chain or one piece of that cycle then yeah it affects your business negatively so we were talking about opportunities and i mean the pandemic is horrible for in so many ways but for the companies that are doing what you're saying, this really is an opportunity because it's it's an opportunity to leverage what you've been doing all what you've been doing all along now is perceived to have a lot more value. Exactly. You know, exactly. But before this, I think a lot of consumers were just make it look good and give it to me as cheaply as possible. Now I think a lot more consumers are interested in what you have to say about the things that you've been doing for years. So um, maybe the business hasn't come back 100% yet, but stand to figure as time goes on, it'll, re it'll represent a growth opportunity because they're gonna be looking for the quality that a company like yours provides. Well, also how you inform your customers too, you know, about what we were doing. So I think that, um, 
that honesty. That mm -hmm. uh, and, I really appreciated that. And did you, do you find that your customers are more interested? I know that we're just really, really busy people. And sometimes you get in too much of the details, then it's just, you know, don't tell me how you make the sausage, just go ahead and, and do your thing. But now they want to hear more about how you do what you do? I think so. Yeah, we, we've been putting updates on our website and then also emailing our customers too um, to just let them know, you know, what are our, you know, what are we doing? Are we following CDC guidelines? You know, what are we essential? We had to let them know about that. So um, because they, they were interested, they were asking us questions. You know, how do you do this? How do you do this? Are you guys essential? Are you guys going to be coming to my home? Are you clothing? So with those questions, they're, they're asking a lot more now than they would prior to the pandemic. I have a couple of questions that are um, slightly off, but also on. Um, the, the first question is, I, I think a lot of people would love to know, how much do you guys actually work? Now, pre-COVID and while, while we're in this COVID, like how, how many hours a week would you guys say that you work? Personally, like, yeah, yeah, as business owners of a, of a large business. So Liz, you know, I like to work. I like, that's just my personality. I guess that's- I do too. The genes that I carry from my uh, grand grandfather. So it's just, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that I am working less. You know, I think I am working equal before the pandemic, but more like, more like it was a lot of learning and a little more stressful uh, work than it was before because it was a lot of learning to make sure we are doing the right stuff. So that was a little taking time. So I remember several times that, you know, before we put out something on our website with the COVID related notice, we have, we have really worked very hard to put that together. And whenever we send a message to our team members, we were really working hard to make sure we are delivering the right message. So I think I want to say it was a little longer hours, uh, more stressful times, uh, you know, uh, but now it's getting better. It's getting more like normal, kind of. What's so, normal? Say again? What's normal for you? So, so usually, uh, at least I wake up around like, uh, six o'clock every morning. I'm usually at the office by the latest eight o'clock, and usually I don't, I don't leave the office until six o'clock. So that's my routine, Monday through Friday. Uh, and then I guess we move, we need to move the computer. I'm sorry, it's out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We get a chance to see your house. Your house so, is beautiful. <laughs> this is our house. Zena can show the house later. <laughs> Uh, and how about you, Zena? Um, you know, during this time, I had to be more with the kids uh, because yeah. no school. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, working more from home, um, like because I, a lot of what I do is behind the scenes, more of the social media, blog posts. Yeah. Uh, still, that's your job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at home. So, yeah. um, you know, I would wake up and do the social uh, distance learning uh, with the kids. Uh, we have three three kids, so I had to manage that from like nine to noon, and then after that would be my working time, and the kids would play, and uh, yeah. so a, a little bit less than normal because I couldn't go in. Also. You were doing another job, exactly. So <laughs> a teaching job, yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Well, you kind of led. I had different. Uh, I had different hats this period. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you kind of led into my next question, too. I was curious, what what do you guys do? Like, what would you, what, what would your job description be? Like, what are the things that you focus on uh, in your company, your, 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 your job? I think for me, um, it's evaluating, um, you know, from time to time, how we respond to our customers, um, especially um, email responses, you know, uh, talking with the office staff about, you know, an appropriate response about, um, you know, it's so-and-so problem or follow-ups or, you know, estimate requests. Um, I would say I do a lot of that. 
And then also like social media posting, um, keeping things up to date with that. And then blog posts. Um, Very right a blog yeah. post online. So, so it sounds like you're in charge of all of the communication in your co company, at least for yeah, that. Yeah, for that, it was a lot of the community involvement too with our local business chambers. Um, oh, yeah. Opportunities to get our, our, our company more involved with the community. So, yeah. you know, different, different roles. Um, at the beginning, I was more in the administrative role. You know, I was the one answering the phones, writing the emails. Yeah. And now it's a little bit more, like I said, behind the scenes, but also important things. Yeah, absolutely. And how about you, Yusef? What, what is your job? What do you typically focus on? You know, Liz, uh, what do I focus on? You know, nowadays, if you ask my daily day, uh, routine, like yeah. usually, uh, you know, we have like insurance part is one thing, the major like, uh, you know, insurance, uh, uh, renewals, uh, hiring, and any major issues uh, that, you know, not, not really uh, any more day-to-day -day, uh, customer uh, complaints or concerns. Uh, that doesn't come to me unless I need to get involved. It's a very major thing that is uh, that needs my attention. But I try to uh, have meeting with with our office staff, uh, I would say two, three times a week, we review the week, how are we doing with the crews, with the schedule, the training. I always uh, I o always have been doing the interviews myself to make sure the person that we are we are hiring, uh, it is, it is, uh, it, it takes enough attention and we, we, we review, uh, we, we have a, we come, we, we, we talk to them and we tell them about our company and learn more about them. So you've got, you've got over 100 employees, but you still hire, do the interviews for, for all your technicians? I, I do, uh, I do, Tom. That wow. is, if I catch somebody filling out an application, I will immediately stop what I'm doing and interview that person because that's the biggest assets, asset that I might be missing. So I will forget about anything. I'll, I'll sit down and get to know her or him. him. You, you think that's another hint, Liz? I um, think. See all my great stuff that he's putting on there? They all have stars next to them. That one's got a star next to it. Yeah. So I, I know, I think, um, a lot of people are... I'm, I'm sorry, Liz, uh, very quickly before I for, for, for forget that. So in, in our office, that's also what you said is very important. If you know who is doing what, uh, that's so crucial for the business, but we also do cross training. So in our office, we are like uh, eight, nine people all together. Uh, ten people uh, actually, including the sales managers. We are about uh, we are ten people. So we we are certain people. They are cross trained, so they know in case somebody takes vacation, they should be able to do the daily bookkeeping or responding to customers. Or we have you know whatever it is, starting from maintenance, maintaining the company vehicles or equipment and supplies to the most ex, uh, complicated stuff. We have, we have every, everybody has cross-trained so they know in case somebody goes on vacation or anything like that. So that's all I want to say. So, so you got, yeah, you got 10 people in your office. What roles do they, what, what's your organization look like? So we have two sales managers, uh, Tom. Uh, they are usually um, on the road meeting with the clients. They do like five, They're six. They're doing your estimates. You're yeah, at home. Estimates. We have a, a general manager. She's also our HR manager. She is in charge of I-9, W-2s, all the employee related. She spends most of her time communicating with the any kind of like work-related injuries, hiring, I-9. We, we, we want to make sure we are educating, we are learning HR ourselves as well, so we know the at least the basics of it. And then she does the daily sales as well. She closes the uh, sales uh, next day. So let's say, you know, uh, today is Wednesday. Next day, she will be closing all the sales. So that's her job, primary job. We have three dedicated person. They respond emails, phone calls, and messages 
Uh, this year we add like texting in between the customers. So we realized that some people, they are easier to get a hold of with the text messaging. So we just add that to our system so they can, that's what they do. Uh, and they also do the follow-ups. Uh, every initial customer, we do follow-ups the next day. Uh, randomly, we follow up with the existing customers. That takes about at least an hour every day to make sure uh, customers are happy. So let's say we have 50 teams. Randomly, each crew, we pick their first houses. Next day, we do their second houses. Sometimes we... So quarterly basis, every customer, every three months, they get a follow-up email or call to make sure. We are not boring them too much, but we are delivering what we're supposed to. So that's what they do. So uh, we have a gentleman, he's in charge of our purchasing, uh, company vehicle maintenance, uh, any customer issues, if anybody reports any damage or anything like that, he would like to go meet in person to make sure it was notified to us and we go take a look at it, what the issue is. So uh, that's uh, basically what he does uh, most of the time. And so two sales, three office, uh, five, uh, eight. Yeah, seven so far. Seven, yeah. Seven, and uh, I the proof coordinator, there's a la lady, she's our scheduling manager slash crew coordinator. She comes early in the morning. You know, it's not like even if you have the best software that you use, uh, being a good company also brings uh, how flexible you are with your customers. Every morning we come, we are, we are getting emails and phone calls. People, they say, you know what, I have this issue. Can I reschedule it? So she shapes up the schedule very last minute. So she's our crew coordinator, uh, dispatcher, scheduling manager. Last minute cancellation. Somebody calls in sick. You got to move stuff around. She's doing all that. Yeah. And then we have another gentleman. He also helps us with the supplies plus the schedule, he's kind of like a joker. He has a little bit uh, maintenance and schedule. Like something. a what? Yeah. A like joker, a what? utility player. Uh, another I thought person. you said drunkard. <laughs> uh, I said joker, I'm sorry. Uh, like, like playing cards. That makes so much more sense. <laughs> yes. Okay, I got it, sorry. I just had to get clear on that. And also, <laughs> the, 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 he does our as web updates and then our website and all works with directly with Zainab and then he's our kind of like uh, business development, web development, uh, so technology te technology <laughs> person in house as well. So. Is that your Joker person? You're, you're, you're oh, talking oh no no that's that's no no yes another person. Okay. Is that ten? I think so. Right, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten. So you do all of the um, financial stuff then, I'm assuming, Yusuf? You, you know, run the numbers, that kind of stuff? I, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear. Could you say one more time, this? Sure. Do you um, do all of the financial aspects of the company? Like, um, who, who does um, accounts receivables, accounts payables? I didn't hear any of that kind of stuff going on. Usually our... Uh, person that mentioned she she does the sales i look at the uh, report weekly report it comes to my desk on mondays and then i take a look at it compare week by week how are we doing and usually we don't have account receivables services are paid at the day of the service mm -hmm. we have one or two customers that if something happens with their credit card it is stolen or something happens they just immediately updates uh, but usually i look at those uh, uh, da daily basis, but at the end of the week, I look at the whole weekly report to make sure all, all everything is. So I have to check in with something I just heard you say. Did I hear you just say, oh, we have some questions here too. I'm not even, oh my gosh, you guys, my job is to hold my phone and to check these. I have not done it <laughs> at all. I'm too busy thinking about my own stuff. All right, we'll get to your question in a minute, you guys. But did I just hear you say that your customers pay by check every day? No, no, by credit card. Most of them go oh. to credit card. Okay. I misunderstood. I was like, what? I'm wow. sorry. I think it's you made a or my, my accent could be. <laughs> so, so we clean the house and then we, we, we close the uh, uh, 
uh, next day. So okay. people, they got charged uh, next day to the service. And so you put every you have everybody's um, cards on file except for those couple that you were talking about. And I'm guessing those couple are the ones that have been around for ten years and old old people. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so we do have some questions here that I probably should get to. Uh, the first one, Ernie, I don't, I don't know if you guys can see your comments. Can you see the comments on your screen? It's on the right-hand side. Yeah, let's put it up there. Now, now we can see them. Well, Tom's going to put them up here for us. Uh, Ernie wants to know, when you guys started out, did you pay yourself? Mr. Ernie, how are you? Let <laughs> <laughs> me say hello to Ernie. Uh, yeah. What is the question? When you started out, did you pay yourself? You know, Ernie, it's such a tough question. I remember when we started out, I was vacuuming. I remember that part. <laughs> working hard. So working hard, two or three jobs. So uh, we were, the first couple of years, the business is not, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was sustaining itself, but we weren't paying ourselves, to be honest with you. It wasn't paying, enough, uh, paying to us. But we were able to pay the expenses and stuff to run the business because we were all investing to our business. We made sure we had beautiful cars, this and that. So more than paying us, we were in investing our business. Yeah. All right. We do have, we have two more questions. You're going to get Leslie. Oh, you already got it up. Okay. Do you charge for late cancellations? Hi, Leslie. Usually there is a, there is a, um, Fifty fifty five dollars uh, cancellation fee, late cancellation fee. But due to the pandemic, we we are not charging late cancellation for the past uh, since the mid March. We are not cancel charging anybody for cancellation, regardless. Okay, I have one more question that somebody asked. Made sure that we ask you this is. Can you explain your pay for performance plan for us a little bit? Okay, like uh, any particular person or general, like uh, what's? Uh, and I'm guessing, um, yeah, what, whatever you want to tell us is what I want to hear. Actually, so, so Liz, what we do first, we have a two weeks of training. It's a paid training, and uh, we we just want to make sure the person that. New hiring likes our company, the atmosphere. We make make sure they feel uh, part of our team. So it's important. We have a we created from our experience. We have kind of like not an employee handbook, but manual. So employee manual. So they are the basics of our uh, procedure. What do we do? What English and Spanish to make sure if there's any language barrier, everybody can easily understand. So there's a two weeks of paid training period. So. This time allows us to make sure the person likes our company and we think that that person is a right fit to our company. Before that, actually, I apologize. We have a very strict uh, hiring procedure. So if someone applies for a job, we check their past employment, their driving records, if they, are, they have a driver license, we check their driving records to make sure they are safe drivers and then we check their past employment. Uh, uh, and then, um, you know, uh, after that, if everything goes good, uh, if they are referred by one of our employees, we offer them bonuses. Especially nowadays, we are offering $500 sign-up bonus for the ones who join to our team. And whoever brings that person, if they stay three months successful, after three months of successful employment, they are entitled to that. We just want to make sure we can capture really the best in the industry. And then uh, after two weeks training, we have three months of probation. So make sure that's also benefits start hitting, kicking. Uh, so we just want to make sure the person is good. Uh, the training went smooth, but also they are, they are doing what they're supposed to. They, they, are, they can be on their own. And after two weeks, uh, uh, after the immediate two weeks training, our trainer and our manager sit down, sit down with those individuals. Uh, welcome them and tell them that you know they are they are they 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 pass the training and then they, they can be on their own and also we just want to make sure they are confirming that they're comfortable to to be on their own if they need an additional one week we don't mind uh, we, we give them additional one week 
with the team. So that's going like that way. And three, three months later, we sit down with those people and regularly our office uh, follows up with their uh, appointments to make sure they are doing good. We are getting good compliments, good feedback from our customers. Uh, sometimes, you know, we do internally in-house that, you know, our office regularly uh, follow up, follows up with those new hirees. That's what we do, basically. I hope I answered the question. And they're paid on a commission basis. Oh, yes. Uh, so, commission? Yes, commission. Uh, that's correct. And then uh, uh, we are working teams of two people, and that's uh, what we do. Uh, uh, but the training is paid salary, and then after that, once they join to our team, we pay them by a commission. On commission. And how do they get raises in your company? You, you were talking about how you've had people working there for years on end. How, how do they get their raises? They or usually they? get a raise. They increase the prices on our customers every couple of years, depending on the, uh, uh, you know, we try to make it uh, regularly, but not every year. Some companies, they do every year. We decided not to do that every year. We are increasing the prices, and when we increase the price, they, it reflects to their pay as well, so they get more. Uh, they are getting more pay. Great. We've we've got time for one more question, and I want to ask it because you mentioned earlier that you work roughly a a ten hour day. I know you've got business interests that go beyond the house cleaning industry, so. Out of that 10 hour day or 50 hour week, how much of that's spent in Made Bright and how much of that is spent in other businesses that, that you have an interest in? You know, a uh, very good question. Tom, I would say 35, 40 hours at least with Made Bright and uh, okay. 25, 30 hours with the other businesses. Yeah, that, that's great. Uh, but it doesn't, feel, it doesn't. I know you. This doesn't. It doesn't feel like work. You do that because that's what you want to do. That's what I want to do. That's <laughs> yeah. And then if we have some hours left, he'll be home. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Same you know, thing. Right? We've gotten much better over the years about that. You know, that was when we first got married. That was our big um, argument topic all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to have to modify if you're a business owner. All right, I know Tom is going to pull up some stuff to share, but I'm going to sneak a question in while he's doing that. How often do you guys go on vacation? Uh, we go on vacation two times, three times a year. Okay, okay. great. So, and, and for like a week at a time? Would that be a normal vacation? Usually we go more than a week because mostly we go overseas and then when we oh. go overseas we spend about 10 days to two weeks okay so i i, and I think that helps to balance it out for people when they're hearing what he's got a big company he still has to work all these hours well first off he doesn't have to and uh, but he wants to and it helps uh, yeah. but also you get time off this one thing I want to tell you, I guess we have a great team of people at the office. I don't really, I'm not, I don't want to give a feeling that I am a micromanager. I know the things that I need to know, but usually everybody has uh, full responsibility or can take initiatives to make it right. So I don't, uh, I like to be on top of the business, but I don't want to do, I, I, I'm not like kind of, getting involved day to day every aspects of it i just tell every every one of my co-workers you know just make it right nobody's going to ask you what why you offer this why you offer that at the end it needs to be good experience so when i'm away i don't really need to get involved unless it's a major accident traffic accident or major very major stuff that i need to know that uh, other than that when I, I i like to enjoy my time off too you know or if there's somebody filling out a job application. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's important, though, Tom. It is. <laughs> Don't forget, that's important. Where do you we have the, Here yeah. do we have coming up tomorrow, Liz. Tell us about our guests for tomorrow. Well, we have Chad and Diana Henley. And um, I know we don't have a lot of time. Um, give their topic here, you guys. They have a pest control business, and they also have their, their home cleaning business. And they are coming right after... Yusuf and Zainab because they also are family owned and we didn't get into that today very much at all. 
Uh, but we will next time. Uh, we will next time. Um, yeah. Hey, hey, hey Liz? Yeah. You know, I am not usually, I'm not active in social media, but one thing I saw today, one of your employees, I believe she was diagnosed um, with uh, with uh, cancer. Uh, it's very kind of you. I think if anybody, whoever is watching this, we should all support that kind of a good cause. I, I'm wishing she will get back soon. So th I just you. wanted to say that's very kind of you, what you're doing, that's great. And we will Thank also you. support you in that cause. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's yeah, nice. we're, we're all, so yeah, let's, let's move on, I'm gonna start crying. Okay, Friday, you have a hint for us? Uh, shoot, I didn't pull it up, I was so busy thinking about everything and making notes. I will pull it up real quick, Tom, while you, while you look up the next piece. On the spot is our rapid fire Q&A session where myself and our special guest each get one minute to answer your most pressing questions. If you haven't subscribed to Cleaning Business Today, you really want to do that. Just your email, first name, last name, that's all you have to do. Um, We've got some really cool stuff coming down the pike with cleaning business today that we're going to be telling you about over the next few days here that's going to give you even more reason to subscribe. It's going to uh, help your business in ways that we haven't been able to help your business before. And we're kind of excited about that. And that's all you're going to get out of me on that today. But take my word for it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you subscribe, you'll be getting our newsletter. This is our resource page for all of our downloads and resources that we've been doing on smart business moves over the last few months now, right? Yeah. All right. Here's my here's my clue. Family, sailing, wine, and work are some of her big passions. All right. That's it. It's getting pretty pretty easy now. I think I might yes. even know who it is. It's getting pretty easy. So TMC, and that was the very first one, in case you don't remember that one. It might make a little bit more sense now. Initials TMC with this person and family, sailing, wine, and work are some of her passions. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for yeah, coming on. And you, guys, you guys are awesome. I really... Uh, Hope in a few weeks we can get you guys to come back again and, and, and pick up on the discussion because I feel like there's so much that we didn't talk about that that we would like to. It would be a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Uh, I just always feel better whenever, actually, whenever, Yusuf, whenever you talk, I really feel uplifted. I feel like you speak to, you know, caring for people and for the world. I really just want to tell you that. I always feel so much better. I listened to you, so thank you. Thank you for having us, Liz. Thank you, Mr. Tom. We appreciate sir. We uh, thank you. Seriously, we need to get you guys back in a few weeks. We'll we'll have that discussion here shortly. But you guys uh, be safe uh, tomorrow. Uh, Chad and Liz Henley, they are awesome, and you'll enjoy that as well. So we'll uh, see you guys tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye y'all. Have a nice day.